Good day, students. I welcome you all to the Chemistry Practical e-learning organized by Lagos State Ministry of Education. I am your host for today, Ade Yoju, Akitude Suleiman. I'm going to revise in the three areas. We are doing our practicals, the volumetric analysis, the qualitative analysis, and the test of practical knowledge. The volumetric analysis is where we do our titration, the indicators that we use for the titration, and the situation whereby we do not use an indicator that we have what we call a self-indicator, as is where we have the oxidometric titration, the oxidation reduction titration. Now, we are going to look at the choice of indicators, and before we start, well, by the time we are through with this session, we are going to now define an indicator. We should be able to do that, then we should be able to look at to know the choice of indicators we are going to use for our volumetric analysis. To start with, indicators are weak organic acids or bases. They are weak organic acids or bases that changes color based on the hydrogen ion concentration that is there in solution. Now, the indicators that we have, we are going to look at the blue litmus, the red litmus, methyl orange, phenol and phenolphthalein. We equally have some other indicators such as bromothiamol blue and um, alizarian yellow. In nature, methyl blue. Blue litmus is blue in nature, and in acid solution, it is red. And in the alkaline, the color is blue. The red litmus, in nature, it is red. In acid, it is equally red, and then in alkaline, it is blue in color. The methyl orange, it is orange in nature, and then pink in acid and yellow in the alkaline medium. Then the phenolphthalein, it is colorless in nature, and then in acid, it's colorless, and in alkaline, it is pink. Having gone through that, we are going to look at the indicators for a particular acid-based titration. Indicator for the particular acid-based titration because the choice of indicators in acid-based titration depends on the strength of the acid and the base. Whether they are strong or weak acid or base. So a wrong choice of indicator will lead to wrong value or end point. Similarly, right indicator, indicators will lead to correct averaging or the tighter values or end point. Now, we have, we have acid-based titration. The suitable indicator that we need to use are in where we have a strong acid and a strong base, any suitable indicators that are here are applicable. Here we have strong acid and a weak base. The methyl orange is our good choice of indicator. And the question where we have a weak acid and a strong base, we have phenolphthalein as our suitable indicator. Where we have a weak acid and a weak base, any suitable indicator is equally useful. Now, welcome back to the tutorial session 
of the e-learning chemistry practical. Now, in that area, please recall that choice of indicators depends on the strength of the acid and the base. And the correct choice of indicator will give you an accurate tighter value. Wrong indicators will give you a wrong tighter value. Equally, the number of drops of indicator is equally necessary. It's advisable to use two or three drops of indicators as at the time you are doing your titration. Except where you are titrating a redox reaction. Let us look at NECO question and the wire question. They are here. I will read it out. We are going to look at different years in NECO and different year in WIEC. The year in, year out, indicators and choices and how it is being used are questions that are familiar. Here, the question reads, you are to determine the concentration of a solution of tetra oxosulfate 6 acid by titrating it with sodium hydroxide as standard solution. In this, it is glaring that the titration is between a strong acid and a strong base. As a result, the question now reads that name a suitable indicator for the reaction. Name a suitable indicator for the reaction. The second question is state the color of your chosen indicator. State the color of your chosen indicator. The third question there goes thus at the end of the titration, what is the color change? Already, we have treated the color of the indicator in nature. Now, we are looking at sodium, uh, we are looking at sodium hydroxide and we are looking at tetra oxosulfate 6 acid. We are, we are talking about strong acid and a strong base. A suitable indicator, as you have, I'm asked to mention here, Six questions, six marks are awarded. Six marks are awarded according to the marking guide. The marks goes thus, and the answer is one to name a suitable indicator methyl red, methyl orange, and phenophthalene are suitable indicators that could be used. Secondly, in the question, state the color of your chosen indicator. In the first one, you have one max each. The second indicator, uh, the second question is state the color of your chosen indicator. The methyl red is yellow, and the methyl orange is equal to yellow, and then phenophthalene is pink. That is in the medium by the time you are doing your touch, but you add it to the to your solution. The third question is at the end of the titration, what will happen? The methyl red is red then, the methyl orange is orange, and the phenophthalene is colorless. Here, what you are asked to do, when you answer questions like that, you go straight to the question asked and the answer to be given. What you are asked to do is how you follow it. You do not have to put the, the color chosen before the suitable indicator that you are asked to give. Don't forget that that is where most of our students make their mistake and they lose these marks. 
That is, now the questions, now by the examination bodies, especially in the practicals, they are inset questions in that, thereby, the question is there. So we now write question A1, question 1A, in the space of question 1B. So in this area, many students are liable to lose many questions. Thank you very much. I'm coming back. We are going to look at the qualitative analysis. Thank you very much. Our last lesson, we work on the cations. Now this one around, we are going to test and identify acid radicals, that is the anions. We are going to look at some selected areas in it. That is SO4 2 minus, SO3 2 minus, CL minus, NO3 minus, and CO3 2 minus. In that area that we are going to do, when you have a test sample that you are going to use to about 2 cm cube, for example, plus diluted CL solution in drops, then now add BACL, you are going to have a white precipitate which is insoluble in dilute acid solution. Then you know it is 2 SO4 to minus. And then where we have a about 2 cm of this your test sample solution in your test tube, then for the chloride, then you are add ACL acid solution. What we are going to have is a white precipitate which is soluble in dilute ACL solution. That will now show that you have SO3 2 minus. In the position we are behind, we are going to look at the chloride ion. There are two major reagents that we are going to use. That is HNO3 and AgNO3. Now, for with about 2 cm cube also of your test sample, you add dilute HNO3, you follow it up by AgNO3. What you are going to observe is an heavy white precipitate. We are going to observe an heavy white precipitate. But on exposure of the light to light, that heavy white precipitate can turn gray. That is it. Then, when you are now going to work on the CO3 2 minus and HCO3 minus, this place, mostly, in where we are going to test for SO4 2 minus, you have about three marks there. When students are writing in the box, this is what you are looking for. You are looking for acid radicals. Students may be talking about the cations that are there, the metal radicals, which is wrong and it decreases their mass. Here, what you are expected to say, some will write SO42 minus, then some will now write. CA plus, CA2 plus, CU2 plus, which are not relevant to what you are going to write. Some may even write NO3 minus. It is not relevant to the answer you are going to be given. Now, what you are talking about, we are talking about CO3 2 minus. What is expected of you? When not add in that, when you add our 2 CNQ of the test sample solution, then you are now add your ACL with. What you are going to see that you are going to, to test for that, for the CO3 2 minus, you see an effervescence. Your report should show an effervescence or gas because you see how it is. It will as if the whole solution wants to turn out of your test tubes. That shows an effervescence as you have been doing it. And then it will now show a gas. That shows that a gas is definitely given out. The gas given out is a colorless, odorless gas. It must reflect in your report that the gas is a colorless, odorless gas and turns lime water milky. It turns lime water milky. That shows that that's the only confirmation because it is not only CO32 minus that gives a colorless, or that gives an effervescence. 
SO3 also gives an effervescence. SO2 also gives an effervescence. And as a result of that, but it also has a colorless odor. It has a colorless gas, but it is not odorless. It has an odor, a pungent smell. And that is the only way it differentiates. And the only way you can quickly differentiate it is adding the lime water. You add the lime water, it's going to give a short pressure. Or that is what it is going to give. And also, let us now revise, let us now go back to the questions. You know, I had questions 2018. Say, describe one chemical test to distinguish between hydrochloric acid and ethanoic acid. The second question we are going to look at is the state what should be observed on adding dilute ACL to Na2CO3. Those are the two questions. That's give you that one as an assignment. Next class, we are going to solve that question and see how marks are awarded. Because that is the area where some students lose this mask. Presentation and the method of answering your questions matters a lot. And that is why students do not really score marks in the question. So we are going to look at that and treat the methods of answering questions. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.